Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. We are live. It is November 15th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. I'll be filling in for Alex in this first hour. Ton of news coming up. Chief amongst it, the top story right now on Infowars.com. And we need to talk about creepy Uncle Joe once again. Headline, ex-Secret Service agent claims Biden engaged in Weinstein-level groping. This is coming out of Big League Politics. This is their exclusive that came out last night. And it coincides with something else that I saw a couple of days ago, which is still going viral on Twitter, which is this thread created by a, an activist called Richard Mills. And it's a compilation of all the unseemly, unsavory incidents involving Joe Biden and children. Now, let's be clear, there's no evidence of illegal activity here, but we have to talk about this because it's going viral once again on Twitter. We've got an article and we're starting to play some examples. This is just one of them, of Joe Biden appearing to touch children, appearing to sniff their hair. I'm gonna go through the list of what he actually does. Most people don't know the sheer volume of shady shenanigans that's going on in these videos. You thought it was just a couple of videos? No, there's literally like 15 in this one thread, all of which are embedded in the article on Infowars.com of Joe Biden posing with children and behaving. I mean, let's, let's, let's be fair to him. He really likes children. Let's just say that. He obviously really likes children and enjoys being in their company. That's all we're going to say right now. The article, and you can see some of those videos in it right now, by the way, save all those videos, because God knows if Twitter's going to delete this thread. This is the thing. They've got New York Times writers quoting this thread on Twitter that you see we're scrolling through right now for TV viewers, saying, how is Twitter going to handle this? In fact, there was a woman called Nicole Perlroth, a New York Times writer, who tweeted, quote, in the past 24 hours, a new alt-right fake news meme has emerged of Joe Biden as a predator. How will at Twitter handle it? So she's directly calling on Twitter to quote, handle it. What do you think that means? It's an obvious, not so subtle call for censorship. And no, this is not an alt right fake news meme. This has been out for years. It's merely getting new attention in light of all these sexual abuse revelations. Now, people have come back and responded to that tweet by a New York Times writer one of whom was Noah Gittell, who is actually a leftist. He, he writes for the BBC Atlantic. And even he acknowledged that this is going to be an issue if Joe Biden runs for president in 2020, which by all indications is going to happen. He tweeted, quote, RTing, retweeting one more time for two reasons. One, it's creepy. He's talking about the list of videos we just showed you. Anyone who has ever experienced, witnessed the sexual abuse of, ch of children knows this is over the line. These are his words. He's a leftist journalist, not mine. Two, Dems be strategic. If Biden is going to run for president in 2020, this creepiness is going to be a big story from the right. So there you have a left-wing columnist admitting, in response to Nicole Perleroth, whose tweet you see there on screen, she wants it censored, but he's admitting that this is going to be a big narrative for the right if Joe Biden runs for president in 2020. And that, again, it's not an alt-right meme. This is important in light of the revelations that we see coming out of Congress, and we're going to get onto that in a second. But again, this, is not, this was around before the alt-right was even a term. Some of these clips are years old. Some of them are more recent, and we're going to go through some of them. But it dovetails with this story which is coming out of big league politics last night. An ex-Secret Service agent is claiming that Joe Biden engaged in Weinstein-level sexual assault and that he would walk around the VP residence late at night completely naked. These are revelations we've heard from other people before you tie that in with all these creepy videos. We're going to have to talk about this. This is extremely chilling. We'll be back. It's the Alex Jones Show live. Infowars.com. Don't go away. The Alex Jones Show, we're talking about creepy Uncle Joe Biden. 
Because top New York Times writers and other verified liberals on Twitter have come out over the past 24 hours and claimed that this story is an alt-right fake news meme. Well, I don't know how videos stretching back years can be a meme. I mean, it's footage, it's clear, it's in your face. But others have responded and said, no, this is going to be a big issue for the left, for the Democrats, if Joe Biden runs in 2020. Now, let's not forget, in 2015, February, we had a Washington Post article entitled, What are we going to do about creepy Uncle Joe Biden? And they went through the list, not necessarily these videos, a couple of them they included with the children, but they also went through a list of women, grown women, who've been obviously made to feel uncomfortable by Joe Biden touching them in public, like grabbing their shoulders. You can see them physically react and try and get away from him in some instances. So there's the Washington Post talking about this nearly three years ago. What are we going to do about creepy Uncle Joe Biden? So no, you can't claim this is an alt-right meme when there, when there were articles about it in the mainstream media years ago. He's becoming notorious for this. And on top of that, we have this huge story last night, which broke last night, out of big league politics. And according to Cassandra Fairbanks, who got the source on this, a Secret Service agent who spoke on condition of anonymity revealed that Joe Biden would, quote, mess with every single woman or teen during these events in the VP's residence and that a Christmas get together at the VP's house had to be cancelled because Biden was, and this is a quote, this is his words, because Biden would grope all of our wives and girlfriends behind. That's his direct quote. He also said the service often had to protect female agents from Biden and that Biden was prone to par parading around the VP residence late at night with no clothes on. I mean, stark, naked, Weinstein-level stuff, said the agent. Again, that's his quote. During one alleged incident in 2009, Biden cupped the breast of a Secret Service agent's girlfriend during a photo, prompting the agent to shove Biden, and then they almost got into a physical confrontation. He almost hit him. That agent was subsequently suspended for a week, according to the source. The article goes on to say, men would often stand in front of female agents and Navy women or create false pretenses to have them leave the room just so they can get away from Biden, according to the agent. Now, these revelations about Biden apparently liking to stroll around naked in the middle of the night were also backed up by best-selling author Ronald Kessler, who wrote that Biden was fond of swimming naked and that Secret Service agents found that offensive. So we've got the backstory, we've got the new revelations from this Secret Service agent, which broke last night, which, by the way, Donald Trump uh, Jr. retweeted that thread where you see all these videos of Joe Biden groping on little children. Let's be honest, that's what it shows. So this is going to be a big issue. Donald Trump Jr. is picking up on this. It's starting to become a narrative. You see the left starting to react by trying to dismiss it as an alt-right meme. It's not an alt-right meme. Let's go through this article. Here you see one of the videos. Let's go right to the top of the Infowars.com article. Ex-Secret Service agent claims Biden engaged in Weinstein-level groping. If you go to that article, then you go down to the first video. You can see, as Richard Mills states, and he's the one with the big viral thread on, tw on Twitter, in this clip, former Vice President Biden uses a candid moment to fondle the chest area of a little girl in front of her entire family. Her visible discomfort is extremely obvious. And you see it in the video. She jerks away from him. There you see it. There's a close-up here in a second. You'll see it. He, like, reaches down. There you see the close-up for TV viewers. She jerks away automatically, natural reaction to it. Go on to the next video that's in, embedded in that article. Now, this is the one that most of you have probably seen. He's, he's leaning down to this 13-year-old girl. By the way, he's obsessed with asking all these children how old they are. That's one of his things he likes to do. He's whispering something in her ear. Now, the senator that you see there later came out on CNN when people started asking questions about this a couple of years ago, when the video first came out. And he said, oh no, my daughter didn't find it creepy at all. And it's like, well, are you saying that or is your daughter saying that? I actually found this girl on Instagram, who's probably around 15, 16 by this point, contacted her, asked her if she found it creepy. 
No response so far. Make of that what you will. Her father, the senator, said it wasn't creepy, so I guess we've got to believe him. You can go down into the third video in this article, which is on Infowars.com, to see Joe Biden's habit of smelling the hair of women and particularly little girls. And remember, a lot of these children, are, he's literally just met them seconds before. It's not like they're long-term family friends or whatever. Some of them are in some cases, but some aren't. Is this the kind of behavior you would be comfortable in seeing if your child was around somebody for the very first time? This really hands-on approach, this stroking of the hair, this sniffing of the hair that he seems to do all the time. And bearing in mind, that's just three videos out of this entire article. The whole thread literally has probably about 15 different videos just from what we've picked up so far. And this is concerning. This is extremely concerning in light of the revelations that we see, not only out of Hollywood, but also out of Congress now. And I mean, I'm gonna summarize this because we don't have time to play all the videos. But again, some of these kids he's meeting literally seconds into meeting them, he starts like touching on them, smelling their hair, stroking their face in a couple of cases, whispering in their ears. He always asks their age immediately, how old are you? And in a couple of cases, he asked the child how old they are, usually a little girl. And in one case, before he asked this little girl her age, she was six, by the way, Biden answered for her before she responded. He said, how old are you, 17? And it's a six-year-old girl. Is that not a little bit bizarre? No, I'm sure it's completely normal. So obviously you've seen, you have, you have been kissing the children, stroking their hair, touching them. At length, we're talking about for, in some cases, 20, 30, 40 seconds on end, even when the child, and in some cases the parent, is clearly uncomfortable with what he's doing. In other instances, repeatedly, Biden tells teen girls from the age of, not just teens, from the age of six up to about 19, to not date men until they're 30. This is something he says over and over again, every time he meets them almost. Don't date any men until you're 30. What's going on with that? Obviously, they're going to date men before they're 30. That's a little bit weird. He repeatedly asks children to stand next to him in all these video clips. He also tells the brothers of these little girls, quote, keep the, and he tells the parents, quote, keep the boys away from their sisters. What in God's name is he talking about there? We're talking about six, seven, eight year old boys with six, seven, eight year old sisters as they line up for the photo op. And Biden is telling the parents, keep the boys away from their sisters. What? What on earth is going through his head to be talking like that about children? That is, that is bizarre, come on. And we've seen it in other cases with women. Now you see another one, he's grabbing her by the shoulders, clearly uncomfortable with, and it goes on for like 30 seconds. This is not his wife. Why are you touching on women, grabbing on their shoulders? Now again, there's no evidence whatsoever that Joe Biden engaged in any illegal activity whatsoever. But in this climate, it's no surprise that people are asking questions about this once again. And to dismiss it as an alt-right meme clearly shows that they're a little bit panicked over what could come of this. Because Biden's doing the talk show circuit right now. He's got a new book out, I think. He was on Colbert uh, last night or a couple of nights ago, trashing Trump positioning himself as the moral guardian of America by saying that Trump basically ripping apart the civic spirit, the morality of America. So it clearly looks as if they're positioning Biden, who may even have beaten Trump if he had run instead of Hillary last year, to run in 2020. So this is going to be an issue. This is going to be a key issue. And the left, the Democrats are starting to panic about it, but we need to treat it seriously. We need to ask serious questions about creepy Uncle Joe Biden. We'll be back on The Alex Jones Show Live. Breaking news at Infowars.com. Don't go away. It's Paul Joseph Watson in for Alex Jones in this first hour of the show. Before we get back into the news, I want to tell you about some of the great specials we have right now. Ending soon at Infowarsstore.com. Trigger the left like nothing else by simply getting these products. They're, they really are triggered by the mere act of you buying our products. 
You know what that boils down to? It boils down to the fact that they can target the advertisers of someone like Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hannity. They can't do that with us because everything's in-house. So to undermine, to sabotage us financially, they have to attack the products themselves. But it's not working. When BuzzFeed did it, we sold more. So that's how you strike back, by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. We have free shipping on selected items, 50% off on a ton of items. We've had to end some specials, but we're extending free shipping while supplies last for Biome Defense 50, the popular probiotic formula. Take advantage of that right now at InfoWarsStore.com. Stock up, get your Christmas gifts sorted right now, well in time for the uh, holiday season. We're also adding Z Shield and dropping it by 50% plus free shipping. Z Shield brings you toxic metal and chemical defense support through its proprietary blend of powerful ingredients. Caveman True Paleo Formula is also back for 50% off again with free shipping at InfoWarsStore.com. You can experience why Caveman has thousands of five star reviews despite all the mainstream media hit pieces. At InfoWarsStore.com, verified independent third party reviews. Again, that is 50% off with free shipping. Other specials include vitamin mineral fusion. You can stock up on that right now at 50% off again with free shipping, as well as the super blue fluoride free mouthwash at 50% off. Again, you can put, instead of buying the, uh, you know, the bathroom packs, which people buy each other at Christmas, why not get it all from us and support this network? We've also got DNA force back in stock at 25% off with free shipping. And Secret 12, 50% off. Again, with free shipping, it's all available right now at InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, Brain Force Plus, personally recommended by me. I'm going to promote it literally every time I do a show now because they had a big temper tantrum on Twitter about 10 days ago. They found a commercial that I'd cut for Brain Force Plus that was six months old. And they basically had a derangement fit over it. They had a mass meltdown because it was like, oh, my God, what's he? He's promoting a new tropic that literally half of Silicon Valley takes. You know, Joe Rogan does it. He's got his own blend of new tropic. That's perfectly fine. He's built his entire podcast on that because it's popular and people like it. It helps them out. Gives you clear cognitive functioning. And our version of it is Brain Force Plus. Look at all those verified reviews, independent, 92% top independent verified reviews, an average of 4.6. That is massive. Out of over 5,600 reviews, almost all of whom are completely satisfied customers. But, oh, my God, the horror of even cutting a commercial. Well, I'm cutting another commercial. I'm going to cut a commercial for this every time I host the show. And we're going to sell so much of this thanks to you the verified liberals on Twitter. They, they actually wrote articles about it as if it was news. Like I cut a promo for a product six months ago. Oh my God, hold the front page. Brainforce Plus, get it right now at InfoWarsStore.com. Now we got more sexual abuse allegations emerging, this time out of Vice. Well, isn't that interesting? Vice, the same publication that lectures men endlessly about toxic masculinity. It now emerges, employees detail a culture of sexual harassment at Vice. This is out of Axios.com. More than a dozen current and former employees at Vice News recounted a culture of sexism and sexual harassment, plus a human resources department that was unresponsive to employee complaints to the Daily Beast. Quote, we have immediately begun reviewing this matter, Vice told the Daily Beast via a statement. So they've got a huge sexual harassment problem in the offices of Vice. And yet they're the ones who on a daily basis come out and, of course, boost third wave feminism. And isn't it sweetly ironic? Every single time the biggest virtue signalers, the biggest male feminists have turned out to also be sexual abusers of women. And now that is ensnaring the offices of vice media. Such such a sweet irony. We've also got this story. Spire, U.S. House paid $15 million to its secret sexual harassment victims. Let's go to this clip first, and then we'll get into the article. This is a clip about this story about these secret payments that are going from Congress to sexual harassment victims. Here's the clip.
fact, out of Yeah, we've got problems with audio with that, so I'm just going to read the article out of Breitbart. Representative Jackie Spire, who is a Democrat out of California, told MSNBC's Chuck Todd on Meet the Press Daily on Tuesday that the U.S. House of Representatives has paid $15 million to alleged victims of sexual harassment by its own members in recent years. She said, quote, we do know that there is about $15 million that has been paid out by the House on behalf of harassers in the last 10 to 15 years. This has been kept completely secret. $15 million has been paid out over sexual harassment claims. So obviously, she said, more than one member of Congress. That was actually Chuck Todd's response. So even he's entertaining it now. Press for details, Spire said she did not know how many members of Congress were involved. She also explained that victims had signed non-disclosure agreements. Now, this was after she testified earlier in the day at the Committee on House Administration that there were two current members of Congress, one Republican and one Democrat, who were guilty of sexual harassment. She did not divulge names. CNN report Tuesday that harassment was widespread on Capitol Hill and in the surrounding office buildings. Now, the problem is the nature of that harassment. Obviously, we have a huge problem with this. It's the very nature of politics and the entertainment industry that a lot of men who get into positions of power think that they can abuse their power by just basically having any woman they desire. On the flip side, there are some women, again, not all, some men who abuse their power, some women that abuse their looks to manipulate men into you know, getting favors from them uh, by flirting with them, by using their charms, by throwing themselves at men. It happens, it's a fact. So there's fault on both sides. Obviously, the majority of sexual harassment is coming from men, but again, feminists, as I've described in my recent video, have hijacked that, used it as a narrative to demonize all men. But of course, we've got a big problem here, and now we've got this Democratic representative saying there are two, I presume, prominent members of Congress on Capitol Hill who are, by the sounds of it, serial sexual harassers of women. We've got $15 million in secret payments going to the victims of this. They're having to sign non-disclosure agreements so they don't talk about it. This has only just begun to explode, this entire sexual abuse scandal. It's percolated down from Hollywood. Now it's getting political. We've had the whole Pest Minster scandal over in London and the fallout from that. Now there are two members of Congress who are deeply involved in it. Their identities are, for the time being, being kept secret. We'll be back on the other side. It's The Alex Jones Show, breaking news at Infowars.com. Don't go away. It's Paul Joseph Watson in for Alex Jones. We're going to get straight back into this news. Chelsea Clinton's been out on Twitter again, making a complete fool out of herself, which is quite a regular occurrence at this point. Gateway Pundit reports, dumb as a brick. Chelsea Clinton celebrates new Sharia law. Barbie doll gets destroyed on Twitter. And yet again, we're seeing dominant cultural institutions in the left fetishize the hijab, the Muslim veil. Try to make it out as a symbol of feminism. It's not. How many times do I have to tell you? How many videos do I have to make about this? Describing, explaining the history of it, explaining how women and young girls in the Middle East are brutalized, are oppressed, because they don't wear the hijab. It's not a symbol of feminism. It's a symbol of actual patriarchal oppression. Staunch feminist whose family takes millions of dollars from Middle Eastern countries that execute LGBT people. But staunch feminist Chelsea Clinton took to her Twitter account to celebrate the new Sharia compliant hijab wearing Barbie doll. Millions of women are abused and oppressed under Sharia law and Chelsea Clinton thinks it's great. She tweeted out a People article, you see it there, celebrating the first ever Barbie to wear a hijab in the brand's 58 year history. Barbie's breaking barriers. Ibhaj Mohammed was the first ever U.S. Olympic athlete to compete wearing a hijab at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. Now she has her very own Barbie, the first to ever wear a hijab in the brand's 58-year history. Now, as we explained yesterday on yesterday's show, this whole idea didn't originate because of this athlete. It originated from feminists going years back who have been calling for this for years. So Chelsea Clinton tweeted, love this. Barbie made their first hijab wearing Shiro doll in honor of American fencing star Ibhaj Mohammed. She tweeted a picture of the doll. 
Then Miley Cyrus came out, who's known for breaking down and wailing uncontrollably in videos because she loves Hillary Clinton so much. Miley Cyrus came out with a tweet and people were like, why do you care? It's only Miley Cyrus, okay? She has millions of impressionable young followers, she said, and you can see the tweet there. Yay, Barbie! One step closer to equality. We have to normalize diversity. Well, no, you're not normalizing diversity. I'll tell you what you're normalizing. In fact, rather than me telling you, again, let's read the words of the head of the Muslim reform movement when she writes about the hijab and how it enforces a purity culture that brutalizes and oppresses women. That's what you're normalizing. Do you get it yet? Did you do any cursory research before tweeting out this utter crap? Miley Cyrus, no. Azra Q. Namani, founder of the Muslim Reform Movement. She pointed out, and this was in my video, questions for Burqa areas, which I made a few months back. She pointed out the different, just the recent examples of young girls and women being brutalized, sometimes killed, for not wearing the hijab, for letting it slip. Let's not forget, by the way, they literally have burqa and hijab police in Indonesia, in Iran, in these other countries that go around looking for women who have let their hijab slip a little bit. They get punished. In Iran, they get put in prison for not wearing the hijab. You have entire protest movements solely based around these women taking off the hijab in Iran. That's real feminism, okay? Why would you want to normalize a system that brutalizes and puts women in cages if they don't follow this insane, stringent purity culture. Why would you want to normalize that, Miley Cyrus, you complete idiot? Azra Q. Namani, founder of the Muslim Reform Movement, said recently in Bar Ali, India, a father killed his daughter, four years old, smashing her head against the floor when her scarf slipped from her head during dinner. Do we want to normalize that? In Ontario, a few years ago, a man strangled his 16-year-old sister when she defied their father, including by refusing to cover her hair. Do we want to normalize that? In November last year, a former University of Missouri instructor dragged a female relative 14 years old out of school by the hair when he discovered she hadn't covered her hair. Do we want to normalize that? Today in Iran, friends of the journalist Masi Alinejad dodge batons as they shoot photos of themselves hair bare in a campaign Alinejad started hashtag my stealthy freedom to protest Iran's mandatory, mandatory headscarf law. Okay, do we want to normalize beating up women because they protest on the street by removing their hijab? Do we want to normalize that? Miley frigging Cyrus, you complete idiot, Chelsea Clinton whose family has took, what, $200 million from Gulf states alone over the past few years, the same Gulf states that still execute homosexuals. Absolutely incredible. The, the, the way they just tweet this out on a whim as a virtue signaling device to millions and millions of impressionable young people when they know absolutely nothing about it, nothing about how the hijab is used as an actual tool of brutality and oppression by an actual toxic masculinity movement called Islam by the patriarchy in the Middle East. Absolutely incredible. We have to deal with this propaganda over and over again. I mean, that's part of the frustration, isn't it? Having to repeat the same talking points over and over again. The left is adept at that. They're completely skilled in doing that. The right isn't because we tend to be a little bit more curious about different things. We get bored of talking about the same subject over and over again, but we have to do it because this disinformation pours forth out of these Twitter accounts, these millions of followers on a daily basis, and it comes up again and again with the hijab. No, it's not a symbol of feminism, it's a symbol of oppression. Talk to actual Muslim reformists. Go and read the history of the first Arab feminist Muslim movement Nearly a hundred years ago, the Egyptian feminist union who protested by removing their hijabs. You dummies, you don't know anything about history. Incredible. Moving on, Information Liberation reports problematic makeup removing app, Makeup, causes mass triggering. So they're not offended about the hijab being a tool of oppression, they're offended about an app that was developed which takes pictures of women removes their makeup and produces the res result you see right there. 
who's that? I think that's Anna Kasparian out of the Young Turks. Is it a little bit cheeky? Maybe a little bit mean? Maybe. Oh, but the triggering. The triggering was so immense that Business Insider actually wrote an article. There you see Rachel Maddow not looking so great. Shock horror. Women don't look as good without any makeup. Oh, my God. Like, we didn't know that. Somebody's just presenting it as a funny app. Absolute meltdown, of course, because we have to be offended about something new every single frigging day. And they were so triggered by it. They named the developer of this app, a guy called uh, Ashok Gabrielanov. They accused him of being a Kremlin agent. <laughs> and he said, he came back on Twitter and said he's going to sue the business insider for lying about him. Then one liberal writer at Slate tried to stick it to Gab Gabrielanov by running him through the app, which is what they did. If you scroll to the very bottom of that article, they thought they would get him back. We're well, going to get him back evil misogynist by running him through the app so he looks exactly the same because of course you know men don't wear makeup kind of gives it away there but again this is what they're outraged about they're not outraged about women and young girls being strangled to death because their hijab slips to the floor they're not outraged about honor killings they're not outraged about female genital mutilation they're not outraged about abs absolute actual brutality against women they see the Trump family looks a little bit better than Anna Kasparian. They're not outraged about that. They're outraged about some stupid app that removes makeup from women. Like, that's the most evil, misogynistic thing you could ever do. Meanwhile, you know, women are being stoned to death in the Middle East because someone said they had an affair with someone. No, we don't care about that. We don't care about women in Iran being persecuted and thrown in cages because they want to remove their hijabs. We don't care about that. We care about this guy who created a stupid app that removes makeup from women. And we're so triggered, we're going to accuse him of being a Russian agent because everybody who we don't like is a Russian agent. Incredible. We'll be back on the other side. It's the Alex Jones Show Live, breaking news at InfoWars.com. Don't go away. We're back live on the Alex Jones Show. Before we get into more vital breaking news stories, I want to again direct you back. Final call for this hour to InfoWarsStore.com, where we have a number of massive discounts and specials running as we approach the Christmas. Say it, Christmas. You can say the word Christmas here. That's okay. Might offend somebody, but we'll just go with it. The Christmas season, we have a lot of great specials and discounts at InfoWarsStore.com. Extended free shipping on selected items. You also have a massive discount of 50% off. We have Super Male Vitality. In fact, that special's ended, so be sure to get back on board with that when the special comes back. But we have other specials still available. Biome Defense 50 is still available at 50% off. It's not going to last long. We don't know when it's going to come back in stock. So stock up on that right now. Z Shield, also the Caveman True Paleo Formula, 50% off again with free shipping. And all those five star re verified reviews, which you've seen, also the Brain Force Plus. It's crucial that everybody listening tries at least once. Brain Force Plus, right there, $29.95. Multiple five star verified reviews. It's still at 25% off, by the way, at InfoWarsStore.com. It triggers them. Even more than those mugs and T-shirts with my face on triggered them. This is like next level triggering. By getting the Brain Force Plus and you support this network, InfoWarsStore.com. Now, before I get into the Maxine Waters news, which is always entertaining because she's literally losing her marbles, but she's being exalted by the left as their new hero. Let's talk about this story out of Breitbart.com. Council cracks down on Islamophobia after parents withdraw children from school mosque trips. Now, they're putting a black mark against parents and against students if they withdraw them from visiting mosques. We saw this back in 2013 with a different headline out of the BBC. Head teacher apologizes over racial discrimination letter. They were putting racial discrimination notes against a child's educational record if they didn't go on a, quote, religious trip, and it was, of course, always a trip to a mosque. Well, now a council in Britain is taking action to crack down on Islamophobia, which is not a real thing and doesn't exist, in response to some parents refusing to send their children on mosque visits arranged by schools. Now, there's been a lot of backlash over this. We've seen pictures out of the Netherlands, other countries where they're made to kneel down, in some cases, made to recite 
the conversion prayer to Islam. Oh, it's just a school trip. Don't worry about it. But now it's emerged that some pupils were being prevented from going on school trips to mosques by their parents. And the local council reacted by producing a document claiming mosque visits are vital in preparing children for life in diverse Britain. Again, this is another part of the capitulation, not multiculturalism. It's you capitulate to that culture, the stronger culture coming in. While families have the right to remove their children from school trips, the council said it was a serious matter that pupils have been withdrawn from mosque visits. Some parents have cited concerns over cost and safety, while others deplored a political agenda behind the activities. To counter this, they're issuing schools with guidance on how to counter the trend, which includes a template letter to parents claiming that mosque visits play an important role in helping to equip pupils for today's diverse Britain. And then they're threatening, quote, this is what the uh, education body is telling the schools, quote, while objections are raised about visits to a number of places of worship, they are most frequently about visits to mosques, which raises the bigger issue of Islamophobia and how this can be addressed. So they're basically saying, if you stop your child going on a school trip to a mosque, you're an Islamophobe, and maybe you need to be investigated for your thought crimes. Of course, if Muslim parents withdrew their kids from church, uh, visits to Christian churches or Christian assemblies, would that be characterized as Christianophobic? No, it wouldn't. It would be completely allowed. There would be no consequences whatsoever. But no, you have to bathe your child in this new tolerance and diversity. You don't get a say. The state controls your activity. And if you kick up a fuss, well, maybe you need to be investigated for your hate crimes. Absolutely insidious, chilling modern Britain that we're living in right now. Well, we have like 3,000 Islamic terrorists running around. Police don't do anything about it. But if you send an Islamophobic tweet, they're banging on your door. That's the country we live in right now. Now, Maxine Waters has come out. This is out of American Mirror. Maxine Waters' Impeach 45 chant sends Glamour Awards into frenzy. California Congresswoman Maxine Waters continued her crusade against President Trump this week by leading women at the Glamour Women of the Year Awards in an Impeach 45 chant at Brooklyn's King Theater. And we have the clip. Here it is. And to say, impeach him! <laughs> There you have it. Mad Maxine once again. Now, notice how we're seeing with this Trump derangement syndrome, which is still virulent, the magazine and fashion industries giving awards to people purely due to their Trump derangement syndrome being the loudest. The ones who screech the loudest about impeachment, about how evil Hitler like, Nazi like, fascist like Trump is. They get the award because it's a massive circle jerk. It's not about achievements. GQ magazine just gave Colin Kaepernick man of the year. His career's completely fallen off the cliff. He's a total failure. Why did they give him the award? Because he screeched the loudest with his Trump derangement syndrome. That's what they have to do. Despite the fact, by the way, we saw with uh, Condé Nast and GQ magazine, their subscribers are plummeting, just like Colin Kaepernick's career. We've seen in Hollywood. All the virtue signaling in Hollywood, Hollywood is collapsing, revenues are way down, a massive reduction in people buying tickets to movies. We've seen it in television ratings. They see Kaepernick, man of the year, even though he's a complete failure. We've seen television, Netflix series that get into this whole Trump derangement syndrome, insert politics into everything their ratings are collapsing. We've seen the NFL and we had the big poll where people said they were not watching the NFL anymore because it was getting too political. When people sit back and want to be entertained and watch a movie or watch a football game, they don't want to hear about the damn politics. But no, they're so hysterical. They have to inject it into everything because they lost the argument politically in 2016. So they have to intensify it even more culturally. Like Andrew Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. They're losing the debate. They're losing the argument politically. So they have to ramp up the hysteria 
by inserting it into culture to energize their base to get out and vote for Democrats, which we saw with the recent elections. It's working to some extent, but to another extent, it's not. They're losing ratings. They're losing income. And to have Maxine Waters being given an award, <laughs> this is the same woman who basically called for Trump's impeachment the day after he was in office. I mean, it was straight from the off, right? This is the same woman who said that the evidence of Russian collusion with Trump was that Putin, Vladimir Putin, invented the phrases, lock her up and crooked Hillary. She got up on MSNBC and claimed that with no evidence whatsoever, but that was her bombshell evidence for Russian collusion with Trump. Because a few weeks ago, she came out at another event and called so she would basically, quote, take out Trump. Dangerous, radical rhetoric, especially in light of all these uh, anti-Trump domestic terrorists that have come to light over the past few weeks. We had another one of those yesterday. Now, this is a woman, Maxine Waters, of course, who came out and said that Russian bots were responsible for hanging physical banners outside of her political events. Russian bots hanging physical banners. This is the, the sanity of this woman. She's like a rung below Nancy Pelosi at this point. This is a woman, Maxine Waters, who came out and said, quote, I was a millennial once. No, you weren't a millennial once. <laughs> this is a woman who confused Russia and Ukraine. She said there was, a there was a connection between Ukraine and Trump. Again, she's made completely bizarre, insta insane statements on a regular basis, but she's the one who screeches the loudest, so she gets given awards. Meanwhile, Marie Claire is coming out and tweeting, we're still waiting for an explanation of Taylor Swift's decision to remain apolitical during the 2016 election, hashtag reputation. So they're now crashing down on Taylor Swift, who is an entertainer and a singer, for not, again, injecting politics into everything by coming out and bashing Trump. Oh, you know, maybe she just wants to be an entertainer and not an amplifier of your relentless, deranged hysteria. Have you ever considered that possibility? But no, if you're not on their team, you're scum. They're going to attack you. They're going to drag you down. You have to inject this Trump derangement hysteria into absolutely everything. And now they're going after Taylor Swift. That's the end of my segment. We'll be back for the second hour. Don't miss it. Breaking news at Infowars.com. Don't go away.